Gunpei Yokoi had been with Nintendo since the 1960s, a time when they still produced toys. In 1980, when the company was still a fledgling game maker, he took Shigeru Miyamoto under his wing, supervising old Shiggy in the making of games like Donkey Kong and Mario Brothers. After the NES took off like a rocket, Yokoi became the head of their first development studio, Nintendo R&D 1, and created the hits Metroid and Kid Icarus. In 1989, Yokoi's team would turn out a successor to the aging Game & Watch line, a gray rectangle with a green screen called the Game Boy, launching with such titles as Tetris, Tennis, Baseball, Castlevania The Adventure, and Super Mario Land. A Mario game made without Miyamoto. But not in the Mushroom Kingdom this time around, but a new country called Sarazalan. There's no Bowser to fight, but an alien called Tatanga instead. The princess you're saving isn't Peach, but Daisy, a new inductee. Your quest to save her spans over four kingdoms. Egyptian-themed Bila Buto. Ocean-themed Muda. Easter Island themed Isan, and Chinese themed Chai. The game plays just like SMB1 for the most part. Worlds 2 4 and 4 4, however, are underwater and sky based shoot em ups, respectively. Aside from piranha plants, none of the classic enemies show up, unless you count the subspecies of bullet bills and goombas. Fireflies do make a comeback, though. Also appearing are Bombshell Koopas, who have bombs for shells. Among the one-shot enemies you fight off are little sphinxes called Gals, robots called Mecha Bones, flying Easter Island heads called Bakadones, and Chinese vampires called Peon Peas. No Fire Mario this time around, though you do have flowers as power-ups. They let you throw Whammo Super Balls. Tell them that, Johnny! The most amazing ball ever created by science! Energized Super Ball is now in your hands! With amazing rebound, Super Ball actually bounces over a house. Now, watch Super Ball carefully in slow motion. Strange, weird, makes every bounce a game, every game more magical. At the end of each kingdom, you fight one of Tatanga's underlings. King Totem as the Sphinx, Dragon Zamas the Sea Monster, and Hiyoihoi, the Rock and Roll Rock Monster. After beating each, you think you've saved Daisy, but the princess is in another kingdom. You fight a cloud monster called Biokintone at the end of World War III, his defeat will draw out the Tongo. Blast him out of the sky and save the real Daisy. After the credits roll, you can play the optional second quest. Even though the game is on the short side, it does occasionally reward you for being an explorer. Who would have thought on their first playthrough that World 2-2 had an invisible platform that could only be completely utilized by Small Mario? Or about the secret elevators in Worlds 1-3 and 3-2? A little dated, probably, but a fun game nonetheless. It showed the capabilities of the Game Boy, and has a great soundtrack. Gotta love the ending theme. <laughs> 